This is a map of the world. In the center is the continent of Africa, and at the bottom is the country of South Africa. We'll show you some of the wildlife you'd expect to see if you visited Kruger National Park in South Africa. Kruger is a large area with marvelously diverse animals and bird populations. If you're lucky, you'll see hyenas. They are scavengers, and most of the time you'll see them around dead animals eating the remains. They eat all the leftovers, sometimes eating some of the bones. Their walk seems a bit awkward to me. Giraffes are the tallest animal you'll see. They eat leaves from the top of the trees, and they certainly have to eat lots of leaves to fill that big body of theirs. Some of the branches they eat have thorns on them, but somehow it doesn't seem to bother their tongue or mouth. There are special birds that feed off of the insects on the skin of the giraffe. They, too, have an interesting way of walking. A giraffe can run at a very fast speed if it wants to, and its kick can kill a lion. And you'll certainly see baboons. They live in large families. They seem to feed on the ground. Notice the baby hanging under the mother's belly. <coughs> they also groom each other to get rid of insects that bury themselves in their hair. And if you're not careful, they'll jump up on your car and ride it while you drive away. Look at the toenails on this baboon. This guy rode with me for a long time. I couldn't get rid of him. Cougar has many varieties of antelopes. This one is called an impala. You often see them in groups. They have a two-tone color scheme, darker brown on top, and lighter brown underneath. The male, mature impala, has beautiful curved horns. You are restricted to driving on the roads, so you only see animals near the roads. This is a zebra from the front, from the rear, and from the side. They eat lots of grass. Many of the birds are amazingly different from those I've seen in other continents. See how this Franklin blends in with its surroundings? This is a different kind of Franklin. Notice how this big bird fishes. It uses one leg to stir the water and get some prey to move. And this is a different kind of stork. Near water, you often see cormorants. This bird makes an interesting sound. In the trees, 
you often see tennis ball-sized nests hanging down from the branches. Most of the time, these are warblers' nests. It must take a lot of skill to construct one of these nests. Ibis can be seen here as well. I think the egret can be found most places in the world. Here's another species of that thin, long-necked bird. This is a Cape buffalo. It's large, and if aggravated, it can be aggressive and dangerous. I've seen it pick up a lion with its horns and throw the lion. You often see these in big herds. Then there's the elephant. He uses his long nose as kind of a hand. You can see how large they are in comparison to a car. And you can see they aren't afraid of cars. And in fact, a car should be afraid of the elephant. The elephant's main diet is tree leaves. In the process of eating tree leaves, the elephant almost destroys the tree. They do a lot of damage. This fellow has some trophy-sized ivory tusks. Many elephants are killed just for this ivory. I love to watch the elephants use their trunks. They are so adept. The elephant is very interesting to watch, how it uses its trunk. The elephant's skin is very thick, especially around the main part of the body, where it can reach up to an inch in thickness. It's very tough. The elephant has chewing teeth, which are replaced approximately every three years. Its trunk is really a fusion of the nose and the upper lip. And they say it has over 150,000 separate muscles. Currently, the elephant is the largest animal in the world. It's an amazing animal. If you look down, you may see some turtles or tortoises. Hippos spend most of their day in the water. They come out at night to forage for food. Sometimes you'll see them fighting, or maybe they're just trying to mate. The hippopotamus is the third largest land animal in the world. There are vast herds of wildebeest, but sometimes you do see them alone. They have horns, and they remind me of cows. This is a kudu. 
Note the slight hump on its back. And it has light-colored, rope-like rings around its body. The kudu eats leaves from bushes of about a medium height. Note the magnificent horns on this adult male kudu. Like all antelope, it can run and jump. The warthog has an ugly-looking head for me. They are pigs that have very stiff, heavy hair. It has two sets of tusks and eats grass. You often see them in groups. A lion is supposed to be the king of the beasts. This lion was walking at the edge of the road and didn't seem to mind us driving alongside him. I guess he knew he was the king. Actually, there was a whole pride of lions walking along the road. And there was a traffic jam as people in cars watched them. There are a variety of small antelope in Africa. I don't know the name of this one. Antelopes are even-toed and are ruminants. Another scavenger is the jackal. It's kind of a medium-sized dog. These are black-backed jackals. They are opportunistic omnivores. Vultures are also scavengers. A pride of lions killed this giraffe several days ago, and they have left the carcass. The vultures have moved in to get the last tidbits. One characteristic of many vulture species is a bald head. Consider yourself lucky if you see African hunting dogs, otherwise known as wild dogs. They are gregarious. They hunt both morning and night for food in packs. They run their prey to exhaustion, then start eating before the prey is dead. As you can see, they are highly social animals. The big elliptical ears and the blotchy skin color scheme are characteristics of the wild dog. This was the largest pack of wild dogs I had ever seen. These two wild dogs are wearing collars and are greeting each other. These are called sables. Notice the white belly. And its horns look long, sharp, and dangerous to me. The cheetah is capable of running at 60 miles an hour for short distances to catch its prey. It hunts about once a day and in daylight. It has a gorgeous pattern to its fur. This ostrich is shy, but can you see it? Head down. Head up, head down. Monkeys are fun to watch. They use their hands, their feet, and their tail to move them around the tree. 
Typically, they eat in trees, safely away from predators. The water buck has a fairly uniform color scheme. Even though it is called a water buck, I don't ever remember seeing it around water. It does have kind of a dark stripe along the top of its nose. The rhinoceros is the second largest land animal in the world, behind the elephant. The rhino will charge for no reason at all. It has very poor eyesight. Their horns are made up of keratin, the same type of protein that makes up our hair and fingernails. They are prized in the black market for their therapeutic value. This is called a niala. It has many prominent, light, rope-like rings around its body, but no hump. A favorite place to try and view animals is at a watering hole. At one time or another, most animals have to go to a watering hole to drink. Well, that kind of summarizes the kinds of wildlife you might expect to see if you visit Kruger National Park in South Africa. These are the animals that I saw. I found the accommodations to be great and the viewing superb, as long as you are patient. Bring your camera and binoculars, and there's plenty to see. Mm -hmm.